turn the top of the screen around and flip it down. Oh, I remember though. I had that one so the inside of your screen could be outside and I would make people's uh, contacts their pictures so when they mm-hmm. pop up I could think it was calling. I was, I was fancy. <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing. I was fancy. As soon as I got me a job and I could buy my, my mom's thing, you can pay for your own phone bill. 
then you can do what yeah. you want to do. And so I paid for my own phone bill. Look at that. I remember the little top five. Motherfuckers putting you in their phone under different niggas' names so they girls don't know that you in the top See, five. I ain't never had to do that. Oh, I have. <laughs> that's that Capricorn. And I'll just say, y'all be coming for the Gemini. But Capricorn's real slick. Capricorn, yeah. Yeah. But we're going to get into our first segment of the day, our Let's Be Real segment. Yes, what we talking about today? We is talking about them. Now, we have talked about, you know, Friendship. friendships and toxic friendships. Mm -hmm. But today we are talking about the friends that require a little too much goddamn attention. Especially in this motherfucking pandemic. What I ain't got time for. Okay, we all going through it. All of us. It's hard. I, Very. It's so hard. You ain't the only one going through it. Just know that. Don't call me every day with all your problems without just being like, damn, you okay, bitch? Facts. Because I be like, so yeah. I'm just sitting up here listening to your trials and tribulations. And then when I finally be like, yeah, so you know, such, such, such. Damn, I didn't know you was going through all that. Well, how would you? No, and then it goes, well, did I tell you about what happened with me and my mama? <laughs> you be like, damn. Sometimes I just be shutting up and listening. But, uh, but some friends, I've had a uh, friendship. That required way mm. too much attention to the point where, like, she had came at me sideways. Like, if I was your nigga, you wouldn't be treating me like this. You're right. <laughs> make it make sense. My. We are not fucking. I you said, not get fucking I, was con I was confused. <laughs> I said, am I wrong? Am I doing something wrong? Am I crazy? But that you feel that you should be on the same le level as somebody that I am fucking? I don't know. Because, like... Say you like my sister now. Yeah. Like you you family boo. If I don't hear from you, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah. But so, I know you be busy and I know the job got you going crazy because I I had let her slide one day when I didn't hear from her on the markup. Yeah. <laughs> I said I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna let her slide because I know she's stressed out. But I'm still gonna send this video like uh uh hey, She's like, uh girl? where the fuck you been? And I do the same thing. <laughs> she did. Like, look, too long done went by. Where the fuck you been? Uh hello, don't act like you don't know what the fuck. You know, but <laughs> Sand matches my energy. Okay. I think it's the one-sidedness for mm -hmm. me. So I'm always giving you emotional support, but I can't ever use you as an outlet. You don't ever check on me. You don't ask about how the fuck I'm doing when I do. Then somehow you still turn the conversation back to you. We all going through it. I just don't have the capacity to keep pouring from my cup and not get any replenishing it. That part. So some of y'all, this one-sidedness and y'all friendships and shit, I don't have the added benefit and perk of fucking you. So what's the incentive of me keeping you around if this is the energy? I swear I tell you, I had a friend who I, I thought I was her baby dad. You probably were. I <laughs> was. Then, okay. I was. And and she know I say this to this to this day. I said, uh, Mitch, where <laughs> where that nigga at? Like mm. she used to call me, where you at? You said you was coming over here. Like, I really thought I was her nigga. You said you was coming over here 20 minutes ago, and I've been waiting. I said, damn, G. Like, I'm on my way. Like, why are you rushing me like this? That's too much. I don't even live there. <laughs> I, I once had a friend tell me, I'm not gay, but if you were, like, a boy, you'd make the best boyfriend. Like, I would date you. I'm like, I would not okay. date you. <laughs> I could not. You could no, no sir, no ma'am. I would not. You require too much attention. And everyone already know who I am as a person, okay? The neediness is not fine. Girl, I saw a post and it was like, you know, the top signs that require like no attention. Capricorn was on the top of the list. Capricorn is always number one. Which is crazy <laughs> because I have dated Capricorn females. And they required so much attention. Mm. But I think it was just because the person that I am, I wasn't giving them, like, any attention. So it's a challenge. Maybe it's a We're challenge. We're competitive. But I was just like, what, 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 what the fuck do you want from me? What do you want from me? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how are you? You know, how's your day? Mm -hmm. You know, I already, I don't like the small talk. Like, you already know what, like, what's, or if I say something, like, what's going on? Oh, okay. You know, you either going to tell me what's going on about your day. You know, I'm busy. What you want? See, I like attention from who I want. Okay. I go in a mood. When I'm in a mood, I want all the attention. I want to be loved up on. But then <laughs> I go through a mood where it was like, I'm good. You know, very, I don't really require a whole lot. I'm very self-sufficient. So I ebb and flow. 
you know? Yeah, I don't require that much attention. Uh -huh. But not in my friendships. I don't think I, I don't feel entitled and I don't demand that from my friends. Because um, yeah. we all got shit going on. I think I've always felt like, and I've always fell back too. If I feel like a friend is going through a lot, sometimes I'll fall back because I feel like you need that space. Yeah. But it's not because I'm trying to be an asshole. Mm -hmm. It's because I feel like you really need that space. And sometimes it would come off as, well, I thought you didn't give a shit. But it's like, no, I just think you needed time to go through what you was going through. I didn't want to cry your space. So maybe it's also like a perception thing for me. But I, I'm I'm the type of nigga that I could sit in the house all day and watch TV and just be cool. Yes. So I don't require a lot of attention. I don't mm -hmm. require to be up under someone. I, no. I don't. I'm good by myself. So, you know, I'm cool yeah, by myself. I, I'm cool by myself. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. It's the. So I read this post that was talking, I feel like everything, I've been following all these therapy pages, y'all, like no bullshit, and like really has helped me a lot, like with processing shit, because I feel mm -hmm. like I've been grieving the loss of friends. I've been having like some mental health challenges and just, you know, a high stress. I had to stop overextending myself. Once I realized I was doing that, motherfuckers went ghost. Like once I stopped putting forth all this work, it's like the friendship was non-existent. That ain't cool. That ain't cool. So, uh, I'm good by myself. If, I, if I'm the one constantly <laughs> yes. reaching out and then I stop and I realize you don't even pick up the phone, be I'm like, check on the motherfucker. hey, bitch, how you doing? I ain't heard from you in a couple of mm -hmm. weeks. Because I literally, when the first, when the pandemic first started, I would reach out to people like, hey, that effort. you know, I ain't talked to you in a while. Even if I didn't talk mm -hmm. to you before, then, you know, I'm checking on everybody. Like, how you doing? Even if it's randomly. And then those same people... They pop in and check in, mm -hmm. check up on me. It's not regularly, mm -hmm. but you know they still do it. Mm -hmm. um, but the ones that don't, don't. The thing is, saying I don't even be pressed about it. You don't. What I be pressed about <laughs> is when they then try to get mad that I didn't reach out to them. Nigga, the phone worked both ways. You haven't tried to call me either, so I thought this was a mutual. We were just chilling. <laughs> Joy don't be pressed about none of that no, shit. I mean, now no. I will say, if if I feel like we have a beef, mm. and I'm gonna ask you about that beef, cause I need to know how I need to move around you. Um, I ain't finna sh <laughs> sugarcoat none of that shit. I need to know exactly how I need to move if I'm in your space, because I'm not finna be that bitch like, hey y'all, how y'all doing? And standing right next to you, you got beef with me, cause I'm gonna have a whole attitude. Everyone's gonna feel that vibe. But. How do you know that you have beef with somebody if they never had? It don't matter if you don't say every to, to say something. If I have the <laughs> instinct that that yeah. we have beef, I'ma say something unless I know you got issues. Mm. Now, if I just know you got issues, I'm like, oh, she ain't right in the mind. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna let that shit slide. But it's only to a certain extent. I had a friend. We had some beef. I heard <laughs> that we had had beef that I didn't know we had beef. Mm -hmm. Right. So I left her alone. But when I finally saw that motherfucker, <laughs> I said, Sammy, what's up? I thought you had a problem with me. I ain't hear from you, girl. Nah, it wasn't nothing. They like always that. backpedal. Yeah, but you wasn't there. You was talking big shit out here. In the always street. backpedal. So, when confronted but yeah, I'm definitely going to confront you about some shit at some point. I cannot let the shit go. Girl, I just be so unbothered and unproblematic. If you cannot communicate your feelings to me clearly, I am not a fucking mind reader, and I'm not going to assume. If we didn't have a conversation, and I don't feel like I did anything, like, I, we just ain't talking. I will literally go on, my, go on my merry way. I had a friend pop off at me. I'm over here dying. I ain't been talking to you, and I'm suffering inside, and you just smiling, and acting like everything is wrong. Everything is happy, and nothing well, wrong. Well, if you were suffering, why you would say something? Because you're right. I'm going to just keep living my life, motherfucker. <laughs> be doing the most I'm, that's maybe that's some capricorn shit i don't know maybe it is but no like i'm just gonna live my life no that's some joy shit yeah i have a friend we just both just stopped talking to each other we ain't talked to each other in years we just no reason nah she See, ain't called me i ain't call her like, it's always a reason with me it, it's normally if i stop talking to you we have some kind of conflict and there was no resolution now what i will say is Sometimes a lot I have friendships where we've had that conflict. A year or two has gone by, and we'll run into each other, and then shit'll be like it was not, nothing never happened. 
sometimes that happens. Sometimes it's still in the back of my mind, like, oh, I know your car, motherfucker. I got your car. So I legit have a friend. We've been friends since freshman year of college. We've never lived in the same place. I think we talk to each other maybe once every six months. Mm -hmm. And then when we see each other randomly, it's like we just saw each other yesterday. So I have friends, friendships like that. Like we don't talk all the time and it's all love. So I don't know, like my tolerance and stuff. I really, I'm an out of sight, out of mind person. But people take that shit personally. If you don't be texting your friends good morning and sending them all these positive vibes, like people really get impressed about that. But if you like me, like, I be so knee deep in my shit, sometimes I don't even think about it. And it's like, ain't, you ain't reached out to me either, shit. So, <laughs> like I say, I talk to you regularly. Yeah, yeah. Saying, I can't, I'm not going. We talk regularly. So Every fucking day. That's just what it is. If you are the friend that I talk regularly to, and it's not a lot, then that's what we do. We but, family, though. Like, exactly. Like, but like my mama say, don't start no shit you can't finish. Facts. So and that's where I fucked up. I learned my lesson. Yeah, I'm not the person that's going to talk to you on the phone every day. I'm not the person that's going to text you every day. So you can't never say that I switched it up on your ass because I never started doing that shit. Yeah, I, I have switched it up. I have. You do a hard switch on that. I did, I did a hard switch. But I am also the motherfucker. If I get one bad vibe, that's, that's all it takes for me. I am in a space now. But... I will admit that in the beginning of some of my friendships, I felt like I was doing too much. Like, mm. I really like the friendship, so I'm like, you know, like in a relationship, I'm going to do what you need me to do to maintain this relationship. And then after a while, it's like, you ain't even this bitch. <laughs> you don't like to talk on the phone. I don't, y'all. I'm a texter. Don't call me. You ain't no damn texter. <laughs> and I don't even text good. I don't text She's back. She's not a good texter. I'm not a good texter, but I really don't like to talk on the phone. She will text back, but it might be like an hour or two later. Listen, Joy is busy, okay? <laughs> I know that Joy is busy, so I know that I can text something. I'm not going to get a response right away. But guess, guess what? This is what I expect. Yeah. You know, I don't expect nothing new. Now, if I Marco her... I might get a mark on right back because, you know, it's, it's a conversation. Yeah. We can have a conversation face mm -hmm. to face. But um, that texting shit, she ain't yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not good with the text messages. Those, but I like texting over talking on the phone. Oh, I definitely like texting over talking on the phone. Don't call my phone. And, it's, and it's, I prefer FaceTime. You know, I do. So I think you like the visual. Yeah. Because it feels like you're having that conversation. Mm -hmm. So I do have a friend that who FaceTimes me. But sometimes I love her to death. She just... I don't know why my friends think I get up early like for pleasure. <laughs> I don't I don't like getting up early. We are not morning people, y'all. I'm not a morning person and she do that shit to me and she think <laughs> it's funny. Well, it's a couple of them that do that to me. One of them has known me since high school. And it's like, bitch, why are you calling me at 8 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Just answer the phone and I will send you a no <laughs> and flip that fucking phone over. Like, no, we're not doing this. It's too early. I drop my kid off at school. I come back and go back to sleep. Stop it. <laughs> you sound like me. Y'all, I need at least several, at least, at least bare minimum an hour to install. But it's one to three hours. I might look function. I tell y'all this is true. We not morning people over here. I'm not. I've never been a morning person. It used to be weekends where I would sleep in until one. I miss those days. Right. And you know how long it's been since I it's slept in? It's been a like long that? time since I slept into one because it's all kind of extracurricular activities a motherfucker got to do. Like, this mom shit is for the birds. Like, You're killing that shit, though. Thank you. Thank you. I'm giving you props. You're killing that shit. But getting up that fucking early. I, and you know, <laughs> the, the kid just got energy as soon as the eyes open and just. Da, 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 I'd be like, sometimes I thought I said, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Too early, Paul is talking. And she looked at me, she's like, Ma, I said, you talking too much, and I'm not even fully awake. I'm just driving, okay? <laughs> I'm just driving to get us to the destination. <laughs> I am not awake. And she starts laughing because, you know, like I said, I talk to my kid like I talk to, to you. She need to know, like, shit. Mom, <laughs> mommy cuss. Shut your ass up, too. She probably <laughs> curse. Yeah, I know she cursed. I used to curse so damn much when I was younger. I love curse words. I ain't met a curse word yet that I ain't like. Girl, I went through her phone. She be cursing. <laughs> I'd be like, mm -hmm. It adds flavor to a story. You know, a little razzle dazzle. Okay. <laughs> every story, every now and again, need a little fuck in it. Or a little bitch. A little bitch. <laughs> a little, little bitch. bitch. <laughs> you know, shit, fuck, motherfucker. Like, bitch. 
I grew I up around it. cops, and if don't nobody know them niggas cuss, <laughs> like, okay. it's, it's hard. My mom be like, yo, mouth, are you serious? This how y'all raised me, though. <laughs> y'all don't remember the parties, like, the parties with all the alcohol and all the cussing? What did you want me to do? <laughs> I used to be four and five, like, bitch, fuck you, motherfucker, bitch. Man, we used to sit on the bus stop at the school just cussing and shit. And then now you see kids that age cussing. I be acting like those. Wait, y'all mama said, why is you talking like that? <laughs> it's just, I said, damn, I used to do that shit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, we done went off on a tangent. But we back, didn't bring it back, you know, full circle, back to the friends. I love my friends. It's just, sometimes it's a little too much. And it's just, you got to talk and be transparent. I am not in a place to be able to give and show up the way that I used to because I'm living through a traumatic ass experience. If you can't understand that, mm-hmm. then we not really friends. I feel like, and I feel like most of most of my friends in my circle now understand that. Yeah. I don't feel like I have any friends that are requiring way too much attention that is, well, maybe, I don't anymore. Maybe one, <laughs> but you know, she's a special case. She knows who she is. <laughs> I tell her I'm going to send her an invoice for all of our therapy sessions. Like, Yeah, at this point, you, uh, I need a retainer fee. I do. <laughs> like, I'm going to send an invoice, and I'm, I'm dead ass going to create an invoice and inbox it. You got a good job. You a nurse. Run me my check. Yeah. Calling me this goddamn early to board. But yeah, um, I don't know. I always say, oh, I'm going to get more friends, but it's so much upkeep as an adult. Because there's always an excuse. There's always a reason why you can't meet up, why you can't do certain things. So you got to put forth a lot of effort. And when you drain, you drain, you know. When you drain, you got to take a break. And I feel like you don't have to have a reason for that break. Yeah. And it shouldn't be a problem. But that you... And it shouldn't jeopardize your friendship. It shouldn't. Because sometimes it's required. Yeah. And I know that, and, and some of my friends, when they be like, bitch, I was just going through it, I'll be like, mm-hmm. for real? Well, I'm happy that you was able to take that space and just mm-hmm. really come to and figure out what it is that you needed because, you know, we all go through it. Mm-hmm. Don't just think that you're the only one going through it. Like, check on your friend. Check on your, your strongest strong friends. Because, shit, all yeah. of us ain't out here crying, and I'm just saying. That's fact. Just because I'm not making a post every five seconds doesn't mean I'm not going through it. And you know that you. if you checked on them up. <laughs> the past few weeks has been real for them all. Real. Real. Yeah. You know, but you know, I'm still making shit shake. Yeah. But it's been out here, I've been out here real stressed. I will say that it's refreshing finding a friend that matches my energy. Like you go hard for me like I go for you. Facts. You know, so I think for me that's I don't mind showing up for my friends, but after a while, if you never show up for me, I can't keep doing that. I got to self-care too. Right. And I'm that bitch. Motherfuckers got to, you know, adult relationships are unconditional. If you want to keep me in your life, you got to put forth effort too. I will move the fuck around. <laughs> and then you'd be like, oh, this yeah. my friend. Yeah. He'd be like, I know I'm shit. <laughs> I know I'm shit. Like, you, you really are. Yeah, I'm funny. You know, I'm, I'm kind of like entertainment. Yes, and I am a ball of joy. Yes, like anybody you know? who tells you Joyce is like a ball of sunshine. Yeah, it's a ball of energy. Ball of <laughs> energy. <laughs> Firecracker. You know, and, and you know I get all the jokes. You yes, know? And we have good fucking time. They just come out. <laughs> yes, we're good fucking time. So you gotta, you gotta also meet us. Halfway, we got right because well, shit, I'm rocking if you roll facts. <laughs> well, on to that, y'all let us know how y'all handle the needy friendships. If you mm-hmm. have needy friendships, mm-hmm. some of y'all fall into the trap and then y'all realize it's a friendship, but you're in a whole ass relationship <laughs> because you gotta pick them up from work, listen to all <laughs> their problems, go get something to eat, with get them. them some money when they right. check short. I ain't got no money. <laughs> Send me some money. My mama this, my daddy can I stay on your couch? Y'all know it, Lynn. The couch sucks yes. the baby. Yes. They were talking about how toxic girlfriends was. I'm like, yes. Girlfriends was very toxic. Very toxic. I had a Lynn. Mm-hmm. That was, yeah, I had a Lynn. And and you know what? I, that, I couldn't stand about that motherfucker. Like, you can come sleep on my couch. <laughs> and you can come stay in my house. And then when I say, hey. I got a mood, mm-hmm. such and such, such and such. Can you help me? I um, asked. I'm busy that day. I asked. This motherfucker was like, yeah. Didn't show up. I said, now mm-hmm. how the fuck you can come eat my food, yep. sleep on my couch, 
But the one time I requested and asked and you agreed, you mm-hmm. don't fucking show up. Yeah. And I'm supposed to be cool about it. I'm not supposed to be mad. So then when you come around and I got an attitude, I'm wrong. Yes. You got me fucked up. The way that people are able to escape accountability is just wild to me. It's very wild. And if you notice that all your friends low-key stop fucking with you, maybe it's you. <clears throat> maybe it's you. So, self-reflect some. Because sometimes, you know, you, or you just hang around the ones that are going to deal with your bullshit. Yep, your yes men, yes, your yes women that will sign off on all your shit. They don't challenge you. Because, well, I'll tell you one thing about Joy. She's going to tell me when I'm wrong. Yeah. <laughs> she's going to tell me. You know what, boo? She gonna say it real loud. <laughs> you know what, boo? Here's what I think. And I'll be like, damn, she's right. <laughs> you're right. And I will tell I'll be like, you're right. You're right. But you know, the friendships I struggle the most in are the ones where I can't have transparent conversations with them. Like, mm-hmm. when I've tried to have conversations about difficult topics, like, you think I want to talk about this shit too? No, but I care about our friendship and I need to get this off my chest. Otherwise, this ain't gonna work for me. And if we can't have those conversations like an adult, then this ain't for me, boo. Right. You know, so I appreciate you for that. Like, we we be talking and we've had, like, we, we talk real with each other. Yeah, we talk about a lot of crazy shit, we do. too. On all different levels, like life, family, relationship, every, work. I mean, I if mean, y'all I, ever saw our Marco Polo conversations, like, it's pure comedy reality every, TV, okay? Every fucking thing. Every fucking thing. Fucking thing. Any, everything. But, you know, hey. It's, it's like I'm happy that I have someone to do that shit okay. with on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You know, my therapist thanks you. <laughs> so, I don't want to just hear about y'all needy friends, but do you have good friends that dead ass match your energy, that show up for you, you show up for them, and it's like a mutual, and mutual effort? And sometimes y'all think y'all have a good friend, but actually look at their friendship. Yeah. Sometimes you, you don't. Sometimes you don't. You be like, oh, that's my best friend. But your best friend is really just along for the ride. And a friend of me, Loki. Hmm. We won't even talk about the friend of me. That's a whole nother episode, boo. Friend of me. I'm going to have to put Keep that on post it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to table that. Table that. Yes. But yeah, y'all let us know. Y'all hit us up on the IG. IG. Let's be real, boo. You know, we got all, all of our links in there. We yes. going to get into our... Let's be bossy. I'm bossy. I'm the 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 bossy. i am Medium, medium, low, medium. Yeah, we are low, medium lit low, right medium now. Lit. Because when I'm a hot, y'all know, I'm sure if y'all haven't, <laughs> you know, we 30 some episodes, and if y'all haven't realized by now when Sam is lit lit, you can tell, you be like, man, we be fucking up. I'll be fucking up my words. My mouth be getting all tongue tied. I'll be saying shit fucked up, but y'all rock with it. Yeah. <laughs> So our bossy boo this week is Miss Ananda Miller. Yes, Ananda. And she is a creator. She okay. is. She makes jewelry, y'all. Dope ass jewelry. Dope ass jewelry. I'm actually going to. So she has some earrings right now on pre-order for Halloween, and it's like a skeleton hand. And it's say like "fuck off" or something like that, y'all. They are so cute. So cute. You know, I wear earrings and I have my ears pierced, but I don't wear earrings. Yeah, you don't wear earrings often. I be wanting to wear earrings, but I have to have 100% real earrings because mm. my shit be breaking out. and they, Or they have to be like hypoallergenic. Good so if you get some hypoallergenic earrings, like I can wear them. So if, if someone makes me earrings, I'll wear them for like a day. Mm-hmm. But then I have to take a break because if not, then I'll break out. I just don't like when my earrings are too heavy. But I'll suffer for some statement pieces. Yeah, because some, sometimes are, I have some cute ones. Yeah. And you just have to wear the cute ones. Because it's like a statement piece. Like, these are statement pieces, y'all. So I might, because heavy earrings, like, irritate me. But I'll suffer. It's yeah. cute shit. Do your thing. <laughs> when we see you out yes. here. Alex, it is fun. With your creations. Y'all yes. check her out on the IG. Um, her website is bliss-art.com. Is that right? Bliss-art. Dash dash or hyphen is it a hyphen yeah Chad. i don't know why that made me think of getting hyphy oh. <laughs> bliss hyphen arts 
dot com. Y'all check out her jewelry. <laughs> support her. Let's support the community. Yes. Out here doing things. You know, we all. We are see you. Out here trying to get our entrepreneurship on. Yeah, y'all have really been out here bossy booing it, okay? It's, they have. Yes. And everything, the, the shit that I find on a regular basis, I'll be like, okay. Constantly. Yes. The talent. Keep you doing your thing, girl. We see you. <laughs> so now we're going to transition on to our boot up. Yes, y'all. And this week, we talking about stage five fucking clingers. The clingy, clingy. partner. Yes. Where are you going? What you doing? When you coming back? Or how long are you gonna be gone? So I'm not invited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not invited. Or I wasn't invited today. If it is a girls' night and I am going to hang with my girls, that means I want to go talk shit with my girl about you. About you. I can't <laughs> talk shit about you when you're there. Don't give them the secret, Sam. It's the thing. <laughs> You should know that we are talking shit about you. Yeah. It's not uh-huh. always bad, but sometimes you did some shit that pisses us off, and I want to talk shit about my girls. Or it's a funny story. It's not always bad. Either way, I need a moment away from you to be able to talk about you to that's my friends. That's it. That's all. Like, and I'm already, like I said, y'all, <laughs> I've said this many times, I am not the clingy person. I'm not gonna sit up under you. I'm not. I don't even want to watch the same TV sometimes. I don't care what. You need your space. I I require mm-hmm. my space. I I will walk away. <laughs> we can be watching TV, and I will get up and walk away and go watch something else in another room. That's just who I am. So no, it's not gonna work for me. Or you just need to know that that's who I am. Now I will give you your attention, mm-hmm. but it's a limit. So I will say that. I have dealt with, I feel like women, when I started dating women, that's when I started seeing the clinginess. And I was like, women really not this clingy. That, what they be saying about us is not true. Like I mean, like, I get sorry for these niggas out here. Shit. And then I had to turn the mirror on myself. Well, yeah, bitch, you can be a little clingy sometimes. I told y'all I ebb and flow. I be having moments where it's like, don't touch me, don't sit next to me, I need my space. And the other moments where it's like, you're doing too much, bitch. Now, it's very <laughs> rare. So here's one thing about me. <laughs> if I want to be up under you, I'm only gonna give you that like I, I'm, I, I'm. Maybe it's the Gemini in me. I'm gonna give you that one time. I'll be like, hey, call off. Oh, I see. If you don't mm-hmm. call off, don't ask me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna ask again. That's facts. Now look, I'm not needy or clingy, but when I am, and you're not there to to give it. That's it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I, that was my attempt. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that is the most attempting that you will get from me. <laughs> because of the You're an elusive ass. I ain't got it. Okay. I ain't got it. I'd be like, what you want from me? So, you know, it's the. It, it, but I ain't gonna need somebody that's up for the challenge. <laughs> I'm like, I. I I got it. You're going to have to be up for the challenge. <laughs> you got to be up for the challenge. Fuck it with me because, listen, I ain't got it in me. Look, so I had a girl that I used to talk to. She was my ex that would, like, send me love notes. Cause it was so sweet, but at the time, it was very overwhelming. What? This was, the, <laughs> this was the one that gave me the painting. See, I can't give nobody like home. that. But she would, like, I guess couldn't sleep and then would just be typing nonstop. In an email, so I would wake up in the morning. How do you respond to shit like that? I don't know, and it would just be like an outpouring, <laughs> like a stream of consciousness. And it, I'm like, this could be sweet, but low key, I'm very overwhelmed right now. Like these are some intense emotions, and we low key only been talking for a couple of months. Yeah, I don't know how to respond to stuff like that. Yeah, it, it was overwhelming. So then it started like, I just feel like you don't love me like I love you. That's not true. I'm just showing it differently. Like right. this is just a little too much for me. I display my love different. Everyone has different love language. Yes love languages and the way that I am displaying my love is not going to be the same that you are. Do you watch Grownish? Yeah. Do you remember that episode when Zoe sent Aaron all them crazy text messages over the night and then it just spiraled? Do you remember that? Yeah. That's what I would wake up to. Oh no. That's what I'm trying to say. Multiple emails. And then she get mad. Yes. Because like how, how am I supposed to respond to this? So I just wanted to paint a picture. That's the closest example I can give you. Like, so it's like, is this sweet? <laughs> is this? It was too much. That would be very unsettling for me. 
<laughs> it became. And I was like, I don't know what to do. This is too much. You cannot, you know, I always dread in any relationship when people be like, can we talk? Can we talk? I, hey. For a minute, yeah. I want to know. Okay. <laughs> you know, we had to vibe out a little bit. <laughs> um, but when they when when they hit me with that, can we talk? First of all, I got anxiety. So yeah. I be, you know, I always think it's something wrong. Like that statement is triggering as fuck. I be like, what the fuck did I do? Did I do something? I don't think I did anything. Well, maybe that could be something. You know. <laughs> so you start thinking through. Well, can we talk now? <laughs> To talk to me about. Or when someone <laughs> trying to hit me like shit like this, I'm gonna tell y'all, I'm awkward when it comes to like Valentine's Day and, and that's yeah. my favorite holiday. Mm-mm. Oh wow! When you gotta pick mushy ass cards and you know how people write in cards. I'm I've never been the person to like write oh. in cards. So when people write in cards to me, like I'd be like, this is so sweet. But I don't be knowing what to, to like, how to respond. I don't know. I feel like I'm just. I will tell you that I put up a good front, but I love love. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm a sucker for love. I am a hopeless romantic. And I love all things Valentine's Day. I am that bitch that will write it. So that's what I'm saying. I think I feel very comfortable giving affection. Okay. But. It's hard for me sometimes to receive it. That's me. But I'm hard to do both. So mm. it's the give. Now sometimes I have some cute stuff. Like I have one, I didn't get a lot of I don't didn't get a lot of Valentine's Day gifts. Um, especially like growing up. But I had one relationship where like I came out, it was like a single rose on my car. And I was like, Oh, that's so sweet. I was like, I've never had that happen before. That is cute. And then it was like I was dating a DJ, so I had a mix. CD. Y'all know how that little mix CDs and all of the songs was like love songs like Beauty, you oh, know, yes, I love that song. Before I Let You Go, blah, blah. it was all of the hits, you know, Drew mm-hmm. Hill. And, and, I made you a mixtape. If you know me, <laughs> I love me some old school R&B. Yes. So if you hit me with an R&B I, and I'm rocking with it because everyone knew I had a long ass ride to work, mm-hmm. always had a long ride to work. So I thought that was cute. And then it, like the, it was like a whole day of things, like actually planned it out. Now what what is a real turn on for me is the planning. Yes. Initiative. Yes. Consistency. The, the planning. But you have to always plan. Mm-hmm. Like if you plan some shit, because I know how to plan some shit. So if you plan some shit and all I had a bitch had to do was show up. Oh. Oh yeah, babe's good for that. They plan some good some good date nights for me. I I'm, I am spoiled in that department. See, because yeah. you love love. See? Yeah, I love love. I'm not mm-mm. But it's a fine line. <laughs> some shit will be real cute. And turn real stalkerish real fast. What I don't like is when you call me back to back. If I didn't answer, I wasn't available. Calling me ten times back to back ain't gonna suddenly. Now when I do answer, we got a whole problem. Like it's an emergency and somebody dying. Fuck you, call me that. <laughs> That's too much. That is very needy. That's very needy, and then it don't be nothing. It don't be nothing. Don't be or nothing. say you forget to call somebody back. Do you get that? Yeah. I'm still waiting for that call. <laughs> Oh, my bad. I went to sleep in my life. What the fuck you mean? Like, shit happens. Like, when people fall asleep on me, I don't be like, I was waiting for you to call me back last night. I'm not, I don't know. That's all clingy to me. Yeah. I feel like people who don't have relationships with other people outside of their partner, like, they become very, very dependent on, like, that relationship. Having that kind of attention. Yeah. You, you got to have some friends. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'd be excited for someone who got friends, you know, <laughs> and you finna go outside, you know, I'm not finna see you a lot. I enjoy that, you know. So you need a long distance relationship, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> You're so elusive, like, look. <laughs> go outside, you know, and have You're some so friends, crazy. and, you know, do your thing, come back home real late, you know, we talk shit, go to sleep, you know, one of them things, like, but shit, sometimes I'll be fucked. Your ass every day, you ain't got shit to do. But I feel like that's how you know you really vibing with somebody when you can see their ass every day. For real? And it's cool. That's yeah. like a thing. Yeah, I was. <laughs> that's how <laughs> me and Bay like really. We didn't want to kill each other in quarantine. So many of our friends like broke up with their motherfuckers. Like they they not in a good place now. <laughs> so it's like 
you know, you seem like, damn, <laughs> we should have did the before, how we, how quarantine started, how it's before going. Before Corona, <laughs> after Corona, motherfucking a whole new life. Whole new lives, like, damn, they broke up, everybody broke up, motherfucking, like. People, look, look. <laughs> Even I never had to spend as much time with you. These people at my job, they got divorces. I said, damn, yeah. y'all didn't make it, huh? <laughs> when you are forced to spend this much time with a motherfucker, you will see, like, I was ignoring some, some shit. You was ignoring all, all the, the shit. shit. Okay. And because, I can't ignore it now. <laughs> because you got a chance to, to get out. Yeah. You know, you got a chance to get to step away from the house. But when you have to just sit in it. You see all sides. You see everything. You be like, oh, no. Nah. So I feel, and I dead ass think that's a, a test. If you can be around a motherfucker every day, oh, yeah. and it's not stressing you like that, then that's something to consider. You know, something to consider. But when I think clingy, I think thin line between love and hate. Lynn Whitfield, like... That was, no, that was crazy. That wasn't even clean. Like, well, no, he fucked up. See? He fucked up. Listen, we ain't even gonna put that on the we not gonna put that on the on the clingy because he you shouldn't have called that motherfucker. He loved her. You can't be doing certain shit when you're doing it. You yes. can't first of all, y'all gotta stop ha- saying sh- certain shit during sex. You yes. Especially to the wrong motherfucker. I Everybody had, can't handle it. I had to learn myself. Like <laughs> you can't be talking shit. Okay. All these bitches. <laughs> my friend right now got a bitch in New York going crazy. I'm like, what? Y'all ain't even met in person yet. What you done? What, what you, you done did? Told her? You done told her something made her change her whole life. I told you can't phone sex everybody. Everybody can't get all the news. You gotta. You know you know gotta. You, with. you gotta slowly piece that <laughs> stuff out. You can't just go full throttle. You just gotta slowly piece it out. Yes, you gotta piece know who you're dealing with. And then if they start acting crazy, then you gotta draw it back. Draw it back. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta bring bring it on back because that motherfucker is gonna go dust on your ass. I have one of them too. Man. That bitch said we we can move to Georgia. Why the fuck is we moving to Georgia? I just met you. Why the fuck is we that's moving? That's some lesbian shit though. Like, <laughs> no, I didn't get it. No, that's no, we're not doing that. Talking about some let's move. What the fuck you mean let's move? With you? You don't even know me that well. Sex be too bomb, too. My nah. mother, I'm not going to live without this. <laughs> I, I, I get nervous. Lock it down. <laughs> yeah, that, that, the nerves and them clingers. Shit. <laughs> but you know, like I said, um, I'm, I'm trying to unpack that, though. Like, why it's so much easier for me to give the affection and then, like, to receive it. Sometimes it's a little too much. Like, if somebody stared at me too much in the face. Oh, I do that with everyone. I'm like, like, why are you why looking, you looking at me? <laughs> I feel like I feel like it's something on my face or something. It's very intimate. Like for somebody to just look at you in your face, it's so awkward for me. I can't. I can't take it. Like, wow, I just think you're beautiful. Shut the fuck up. No, you <laughs> don't. Like that's how I be feeling. Like, what about selling dreams too? Right. Don't hit me with that slick shit. That cat that smooth ass talking shit. Ass. Smooth talking ass. Like you was a motherfucking liar. And then they always say shit like that, and they smell good. And I and I say that. I'd be like, you fucking liar. Shut up. I say shut up. Like this is my response to a compliment. Shut the fuck up. See, see, we gotta work through that. That should not be our responses to compliments. I mean, but that's how I feel. <laughs> I don't feel like you being true and honest with your compliment. I feel like you giving me bullshit. Yeah, motherfuckers really do be out here. You said every hole that. Right. I know you out here gaming these hoes. You ain't been gaming me too. <laughs> Shit. I've been gaming before. Well, that's probably it. I been right. I been game before, so when you try to hit me with all the cute shit, and you might mean it, mm-hmm. I just don't believe it. <laughs> so it's a strategy for when you want to feel like closer to your partner and have more intimacy. They say lay, like sit on the floor, I and you that just stare shit. at each other. I'm not and doing I'm that. Like, I can see what y'all aiming for. I'm a laugh. <laughs> it's not even gonna be serious with me. I'll be like, so we really finna do this? Look. You gonna try with me today? Matter of <laughs> fact, I'm gonna I'm like, man, let's do this. Let's see if it works. And I'll report back. I'm gonna experiment. See you and your baby, y'all do that. I can see y'all doing that. Yes, but I, I would probably laugh as well. I'm gonna laugh. You see, you can't do everything with me. When she be staring at me, like she like seeing through my soul. I'm like, this too much. It's too much. <laughs> like, why are you staring at me like that? <laughs> He's just so beautiful. I like my kids said that to me. I watch you when you sleep. You're just so gorgeous. I'd be like, girl, shut up. I can't give you a compliment. Jeez, mom. Because you're lying. I think my kid is for that. That's why I'm like, you know, you're right. I'm going to be like, you're right. I am gorgeous. Because, bitch, I am. So, 
Like, I know I'm fly, I'm, but I'm, sometimes I be feeling like you just trying to smooth talk something about me. Yes, it's the intentions. You don't always know people's intentions, but... I don't know. trust nobody. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all let us know how y'all do with the clingy... Tell uh, us your clingy stories. Yeah, your clingy stories. You know, you can't even get up and, and go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Or I'm the bathroom bitch. I am the motherfucker that will follow you to the bathroom and will no. talk to you at the door. So I used to date someone mm -hmm. that always had to touch me while they were sleeping. And when I would try to... Even when it's hot? Yep. Like even if it's my arm, my leg, they had to have their hand on something. And then I, when I would try to slip out, where are you going? Where the fuck you think I'm going? To the back? Why are you asking me? But it was every night. See... I can do that. What I don't like is when you ask me to move over. You gonna get all this fucking body heat. I'm touching you. When I wanna touch, don't, don't ask me to move over. I'm gonna go sleep on the couch. I'm not that bitch. What you wait? You wanna be on top of yes. that? Yes. Oh, see, no. my favorite. My favorite is because we. I didn't know we was talking about sleep. sleep, sleep we talking habits. about it all. First of all, my favorite place to sleep is on Bay's titties. It is like a fucking cloud of pillows. It's just... <sighs> and you know she loves you to let you do that shit. That is my time. favorite. It's like I go to sleep instantly. I don't know. I just lay my head on her bosom and then the bitch be out. Don't mm -hmm. let her start rubbing my forehead, girl. It's like... Y'all got a different little... That shit would drive <laughs> me crazy. Look, That's I'm, my favorite shit. Don't, first of all, I don't even want you breathing on me that hard. That's my favorite <laughs> shit. Don't I'm, let me have a bad dream. Bring me your titty. I'm turning my back. It's tip time. And you, I want you to turn your back. We go be back to back because I don't want to feel your breath on the back of my neck. Girl. And I definitely don't want to feel your breath on my chest. She gets all of the all Absolutely of the breath. That's not. my favorite. Like laying on the titties. Mm -mm. I can just feel it now. And you know she tall. So when I hug, I just lay there a little bit and motivate. I just, oh, my, my irritation would That's just my be so. Shit. <laughs> she going to be so mad at me that I'm putting it. You know she loves you. Because listen, I'd be like, uh uh. Yes, that's my like, favorite. Yeah, y'all tell us y'all stories. <laughs> head on thy bosom. I can't. I don't, she would have to go. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, girl, it's hot. It's too hot for this shit. That is my favorite line. It is too hot for this shit. Like, bring me the titty. Mm -mm. Tip time. Well, y'all let us know about y'all situations, y'all clingy relationships. Any breast women out there like me? I got to go. It's your girl, Sam. And it's your girl, Joy. And we out here. Peace.